American woman. Let me be Don't go staying around my door I don't want to see your face no more I want more important things to do But my line of go no you know Hmm This Hmm Today's the 13th, is that right? Yes. So get away. <laughs> Where was it? Uh, it was at Carlton. Uh, really? <laughs> she, um, thought it was Kyla's and pulled it from the cart. Oh. Right before I left, yeah. Um, for spring break. Oh, man. In the front office, and it's just been sitting there. And she, <laughs> yeah. Oh, you need to pick up your friend. She's like, I have my friend. <laughs> I was like, I knew that was mine when I saw it. Oh, hilarious. How did that already get checked? What the heck? What the heck, folks? Blocked? For a copyright claim? Like one of our classes. Why would it be? Unless this was. You know what? Is this actually? No, it's not. The, um, on the exam. What the frick? Error. Oh, because we watched the video. Okay, okay, I see. You suck, like, don't be talking about being here. You what? What? <laughs> what? What, 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 what song? What song? Wait, where I heard something. <laughs> I was like, why did it be like, No, like, no, we did not. We oh, did not. What? Nope. Oh, nothing. Nope. Nope. We did a rhetorical analysis of the music video. <laughs> Are they French? <laughs> no, they're not French. They just speak it like I don't know why. Like everybody else speaks French, but I don't speak French. fluently. Yeah. Wow. How unusual. They just like it. <laughs> Your mom's what? Oh. They just like it. It does sound very pretty, despite the fact that they use like none of the letters. It'll be like a 12 letter word that's one syllable. Oh, one word. I'm like, how does oh, this happen? Oh, 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 it's fake. It means French. But I have to so, say Yeah, so. So all of my friends uh, also say pop. <laughs> like, no, it's not pop. It's faux. So. Like so faux fur. No, 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 you're the, you have the highest average in ELA. You don't even know what this is. It says faux. It does say faux. It's just one of those words. French is weird. French is very weird, but English is very weird too. So, yeah, like, what, what type of word is extraordinary? It's almost like an oxymoron, you know, because you would think it meant like super ordinary. But it actually means not ordinary at all. But so strange. Really, 
Fabulous. Fabulous. That word is so very weird. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I don't like this yet. I don't know if it's somewhere else. <laughs> like where? Like, like somewhere in Europe. I've never been to Europe. But... Yeah, I know. They totally got rid of it. Jealous. I wish we'd totally get rid of it. Wow. Hmm. I bet cost of living is really high, though. I've only got Kyla in the waiting room. I hate to let one person in. I'm going to let everyone in at once. Oh, oops. <laughs> Oh no, American woman, stay away from me. All right, well, I'm going to let Kyle in at any rate. Okay, here comes Trine. Hi, folks. We'll see if Victoria shows up. David is here. Trine is here virtually. AJ is here. Marilyn is here. Victoria is not yet here. And Kyla is. I'm going to wait like one more minute and see if Victoria shows up. Do, 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 do. Ba, 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 ba. Be careful with this message. Lucas Gray has never sent you messages using this email address. That's it. It's just that it's his. It's from his phone. Who cares? These are very big photos he sent me. Yeah, yeah. It's safe. It's safe. Uh, how weird. He only sent me two. Oh, okay. I feel like this is going to take up so much room, but still go hanging around my door. I am going to get started in just a second, guys. Oh, look at there. And Victoria did come. So it's a good thing that I waited. Perf, perfect. Now uh, this shows that, sorry, I'm, I'm so confused about what he sent me. Oh, he sent me a cute picture of you, Marilyn. What? Um, Mr. Gray sent me a cute picture of you from recording at the winter concert thing. Oh. Sent me a few for your book. Okay, let's let's get started here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. My mom. Okay, I don't have any books, but I know going to my mom. Yeah. And I see up there. I saw this at my old school. I thought I took the photo at old school. I'm like, mom. I haven't been in that school for two years. Why are you so slow? And I'm just like. Well, my great life got an easy girl goes there. <laughs> That's so funny. I'm like, why? Like, you're like, why do you need to know what's going on there? You like took her out of school. If you took her out of school every other day, I wouldn't know what's happening. All right. I'm trying to make this happen. Good Lord. I just really hate this setup. I think these screens might be more trouble than they're worth. And I know that they cost a lot, so people think they're worth a lot. Okay. I'm gonna share my screen with you. I don't know that we'll, uh, we'll take up a whole lot of time today. Um, I'm going to kind of run you through these three brief presentations. I know that we have done presentations before about um, intros, thesis statements and conclusions, but I found some better ones, first of all. Um, 
And if you're in English 102 next year, you'll see them again. Um, but considering we're about to start writing every week, I think some of this is good stuff, particularly because when I give you guys feedback, I do say a lot of stuff about thesis statements uh, and conclusions. Intros, I feel like over time y'all have gotten better with, um, but it also, also always helps to review. So I put these all on Canvas, uh, but I'm just going to share them with you through sharing my screen and my PDF. Come on, I want this thing to move. Yeah, you. Gonna go hanging around my door. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, so the introductory paragraph. It performs a very specific and obvious function, which is to introduce your subject and your argument to your reader. Uh, in doing so, it provides the context for the discussion to follow and lays out a blueprint structure for readers to follow along and evaluate. And I love that term blueprint because it says exactly what it is. Like it's supposed to, it's like if you're looking at the blueprints of a house and you're like, oh, that's what it's supposed to look like. Um, and if you look at your introduction, you should be able to kind of look at it and be like, oh, that's what the essay is gonna look like. It'll go a long way toward establishing both the reader's interest in your analysis and the reader's faith in your credibility as a writer. And an ineffective, vague, or poorly phrased introduction will do the opposite. I will warn you guys, um, all, all three of these presentations are more sort of focused around a literary analysis, which is not really something that we will write in this class, but I'll kind of tweak that as we go. That's probably really small and hard to see, but um, an intro for an analytical essay usually contains some elements that readers have come to expect, uh, and you should work to fulfill those expectations by including them in your own essay. Um, those elements include an engaging opening, a description of your subject, and a very specific statement, aka thesis, about your central point or argument in the essay. Um, so you, you need like a hook, a summary, and a very precise thesis. Um, we're going to skip this one because that's more about specifically the literary analysis essay. Um, and I'm, I'm going to kind of breeze through all of these, honestly. Um, while trying to get the reader's attention is an important goal in the opening of the essay, be sure that you don't do that at the expense of your credibility. Um, and this is actually a hilarious example. One of my favorite examples of someone missing the mark in this regard is a student who opened an essay on gun control with the sentences, sex, gun control is an important issue in the country today. And like, yeah, it's got you like trying to figure out what's going on. You're going to keep reading. But like those two sentences, well, the first one's not even a sentence, don't have anything to do with each other. And it doesn't make any sense. Um, and that student said he was just trying to get the reader's attention. Um, it, that's important, but it's often difficult. Um, I'm gonna skip this stuff about literary works. Um, this top one, you could begin with some general comments on the specific issue you're planning to discuss. Um, and obviously like this one is geared more towards literary analysis, but um, an example here would be when people confront their own false beliefs about themselves, they can achieve a healthy new self-awareness or fall further into destructive illusions. These opposite reactions characterize these two characters in Arthur Miller's Death of a Salesman. So, you know, they kind of start out with this general idea, this sort of more broad um, analysis and then move into how it's specifically related to their topic. And you can do that no matter what you're writing about. Um, don't open with a cliche. You can open with a quote, particularly if you are doing like an argumentative essay. Like if you, if you have a passage that you've read and you have to like give your opinion on it, um, you could quote that passage. We don't need that. Um, we're going to talk more specifically about the thesis in the next presentation, but um, it is the most important element of the intro because without it, the essay really doesn't have a purpose. We don't know what you're arguing. We don't know what the what the point of it actually is. So you want to make sure that your thesis as, is as precise as you can make it. Um, don't worry about spoiling the essay for the reader by providing too detailed of a thesis. 
the reader's going to want specificity so that they can evaluate and understand your argument. Um, and if you have, you know, we've kind of gone through that formulaic, like three part thesis, like um, the voting age should be race 21 because blank, blank, and blank. If you're doing that, then like the first reason you should write about that in your first paragraph. The second reason you should write that about that in your second paragraph. Um, and that just kind of has to do with continuity and organization. So let's move on to thesis statements, subtitle. Um, it's gonna be a specific and clear articulation of your central argument in your essay. It specifies both your subject and what you are saying about it, your argument about it, your opinion. Um, so it has to have an arguable statement, not just a statement of fact. Um, like a, a bad thesis statement would be charter schools have, or like the number of charter schools has increased in the United States in the last 10 years. That's not a thesis statement. It's not arguing anything. You can check out whether that's true or not. Um, if you were going to write an arguable thesis about charter schools, you might say like charter schools are superior to public schools because blank, blank, and blank. Um, we're going to skip that because it's just about uh, literary analysis. But here's some important things, things that a thesis statement cannot contain. Um, only a statement of fact without an argument. And the one that I just mentioned about charter schools would be a good example of that. Um, can't just be a summary of whatever you've read. Um, and this still applies to us because whether we're like reading a speech for rhetorical analysis or you know, a short quote or something and then having to respond to it through um, an argumentative essay, you're gonna wanna refer back to the text, but your thesis is not gonna be just a summary. That's not an argument. Um, you can't refer to yourself in the thesis, and some people really struggle with this one. Like, I believe that the voting age should be raised 21. Leave that out. Um, don't refer to your reader in the thesis. Like, as you can see from everything that I've said, blah, blah, blah. Um, don't refer to the essay directly in the thesis. Like, in the following essay, you'll hear about blah, blah, blah. Um, cliches are a no-no. Um, the thesis cannot assert that the essay will have an argument. It must specify the argument. Like by the end of the essay, you'll understand that. Don't tell me that. Um, like just let me read the essay and figure it out. And the thesis cannot be a question, even though uh, one of my former students who still goes here um, would argue that and really tried very hard to make thesis questions happen. Um, so you can kind of see here, and I am going to just stick with their examples, even though this is not the kind of essay we're writing, it's still applicable. You'll be able to kind of see how this translates. You have a really weak thesis in this first one. And these are about um, the play Death of a Salesman, by the way. Willie's attitudes towards his sons hurt their relationship. That's kind of just a fact. Like if you read the play, you'll be like, yeah, that does happen. Um, if we improve it a little bit, Willie's attempts to get Biff and Happy to fulfill his own dreams hurt their relationship and the son's individual development. It's better. It's got more detail. Well, let's go to the solid thesis. Willie's attempts to make Biff and Happy fulfill his own dreams force his sons to adopt values contrary to their natural abilities, which undercut their relationship with their father and stunt the son's individual developments. That's really solid, really detailed. I'm not even going to read you the very strong one because I actually think that it's too long and not very strong. And lastly, how to write a conclusion paragraph. Aren't these first slides really pretty? I think they are. The conclusion can be really difficult to write uh, because you have to come up with something meaningful to say that emerges directly from the argument that you've just made in the whole rest of the essay. Um, but that something meaningful can't just simply repeat what you've already said. Um, the conclusion is often treated as like a throwaway paragraph where all students, students just assume they all have, all they have to do is repeat or rephrase the thesis and any topic sentences from their body paragraphs. And 
if you were writing a really long essay, like a 20 pager or something, that might be all right. But all of the essays we're writing are short enough that that's going to come that's going to come across really fluffy, like kind of filler. Uh, so the conclusion is where you literally come up with exactly what you have concluded. What do you now know or believe as a result of writing the essay? Thinking about that can take some time. Um, so obviously like it's handy that it comes at the end because you can sort of look back and see everything that you've written and think like, what, what can I take away from this? What kind of bigger meaning does it have? Um, what questions am I left with? That kind of thing. So here's some stuff for conclusions that's what you should not do. Um, don't just repeat your previous points without adding anything to them. And that's definitely a really common mistake that you wanna to try to avoid. Um, it looks really lazy and just, even if the rest of your essay is really good, ending it that way is gonna be like, oh man, they crapped out at the end. Um, you don't wanna introduce an entirely new topic to the discussion. Um, it just wouldn't make sense. If you have something new to add, you should do another body paragraph. If you're, um, no, this is still kind of relevant, like saying that the writer did a good job, like that's not really important to say, like it's not really, we're not really looking at your opinion. Like we know that you're, you think they're worth writing about or at least that you are being forced to write about them. Um, don't end the essay on a cliche. Don't start it with one. Don't end it with one. Um, you can think of something better than a cliche to say. Um, no, that one's weird. Some stuff that you should work to accomplish. Um, we looked at the don'ts. Now this is kind of the do's. You're trying to create an argument that makes sense and that comes together at the end. So you need to show how your central points relate to one another and explain the overall significance of your argument or your analysis in the essay. And you wanna end the essay with an assertive statement uh, that conveys a sense of confidence, helps you drive home your central ideas. Um, so you need to understand your own argument. Obviously that's very important. Um, so kind of ask yourselves these questions and this is, again, like more geared towards literary analysis, but still definitely applicable to us. Um, what's the writer's apparent message or point in the work? What are the effects of the writer presenting this particular situation in this particular way? And what has the reader learned, come to understand, or come to see more clearly in the process of reading this work? And if you ask yourself those questions, it'll really help you address um, the reader's central goal in reading your essay, which is to better understand what you, like the work that you're writing about. So you're in effect teaching this reader about the work you're analyzing. I think that would be like specifically for rhetorical analysis more than anything, but to teach it, you have to be able to understand yourself. And the only way to do this is to ask a lot of questions and work as hard as you can to answer them. And if you do that, then you'll have a strong concluding paragraph. All right, so that's all the content that we have for today. Um, if you have not yet turned in your uh, your two sentences from yesterday, that's due like end of day today. So you want to go ahead and finish that up. Um, tomorrow is the last day of the quarter. So any of you who have like had extended time on stuff, uh, tomorrow is the last day to get stuff in. Grades are due Thursday, so I have to get those graded and put in. Um, and so tomorrow, for tomorrow's success session, um, I probably will not keep you guys very long. Um, I'm not sure if I'll actually keep anybody. I mean, I'll, I'll address that tomorrow, but um, most of you who are missing stuff are past the threshold of when you can turn stuff in. So. Um, I didn't want to like start much new content today or tomorrow because uh, because we have this end of the quarter coming up and I don't want to like give you guys grades that we that won't be able to be on quarter three. So this um, the short horror film thing yesterday, rhetorical analysis of terror. Um, that's the last grade that you'll have on your uh, quarter three grade. Any questions from my virtual folks? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys go and I'll see y'all tomorrow.
tomorrow.